So I'm going to let Dr. Kuhar give you a lot more of the detail of this pet project, pardon the pun, um, that I think we will all be proud of. And it shows the evolution and the continuing philosophy of our zoo to be a 21st century protector. Dr. Kuhar. Thank you, Commissioner Rinker. Thank you all for coming out today. I'm very excited about this Asian Highlands project. Um, but before we get to the groundbreaking, you know, you don't get to a groundbreaking without a lot of work from a lot of people. So I want to say a couple of thank yous to start. Uh, first of all, thanks to uh, Mike Vaughn, Liz Fowler, uh, Muffy Bowen, Bob Reitman, the entire Cleveland Zoological Society staff, all of the Cleveland Zoological Society trustees, because they, they help us fund large capital projects like this. So without their help, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you very much to Cleveland Zoological Society. I want to say thanks to the design team, uh, Van Auken Aikens here locally, and WDM, the contracted zoo designer, to be able to bring these projects forward, and A.B. Higley, who's going to be doing the heavy lifting, literally, over the next nine months. They've already been doing quite a bit here on the site, you can see. Um, so we're very excited. And then, last and certainly not least, my team. I want to acknowledge uh, Andy Kornack and the Zoological Programs team, Christopher Lau and his facility operations team, Dr. Kristen Lucas and her conservation and science team, Vicki Searles and the conservation education team, and Tim Savona um, and his guest services team. So to build a modern zoo exhibit, you really need collaborative e uh, efforts. You need expert input in order to be able to design the right space because we're not really uh, putting animals in boxes anymore. We're designing very complex, very intricate exhibits that have a mission and a purpose, and we're very excited about that. Uh, at Cleveland Metro Parks, we're focusing on a future for wildlife. We're all about engaging the public in conservation to provide an opportunity for them to get connected with animals in a way that inspires hope, that inspires people to take action. It's a new approach to zoos, and we're very excited about it. To do that, we need to take the best possible care of our animals. With this space, what we're building here is an exhibit that will highlight some of the most endangered species throughout Asia. They come from a vast wild lands stretching all across the continent, but they are all connected at that mid and high altitude specifically. There's some amazing creatures, but because they're at those mid and high altitudes, they're perfectly adapted to live here in Northeast Ohio. They work well in our climate, which is something that not all of us can say necessarily. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build on the design concepts that we've used in African Elephant Crossing and then Roseboro Tiger Passage. We're gonna do what's best for the animals by providing some complex environments. The exhibit features are gonna have a number of, of opportunities for those animals. Cold spots, climbing opportunities with poles and, and climbing structures, rocks. We know that these cats love to be up on high spaces. We're gonna provide those opportunities in a way that allows the animal to perform their natural behaviors and allow guests to see that. Because we feel the most fundamental design concept is to let the animals do what the animals do. Because there's no better experience for our guests than to see those animals being the amazing animals that they are. Our leopard's gonna feature our snow leopard pair. Uh, you may have seen them quite a bit last summer with the birth of their cub, Samira. Um, they're very exciting. It's gonna be a great opportunity to feature those snow leopards. We're also gonna feature Amur leopard. Scientists now say that there's less than 100 Amur leopard left in the wild. So having the opportunity to see our male here will be a great opportunity for the people of Northeast Ohio. We're going to show our wonderfully, incredibly cute red panda cubs and a new species for us, Takin, which is a sort of yak-like goat antelope. Looks like a creature that's pulled out of a Dr. Seuss book, but it's an amazing winter-hardy species that's going to be a nice addition to our collection here. And we're going to build on our successes. Our intention is to breed our snow leopard pair like we have in the past and breed our red pandas as we have in the past. And with that, if you need a, a reminder of our success, I want to announce the birth of a pair of red panda cubs. They were born on June 20th. Um, they had their first natal, natal exam earlier this week. Uh, there's a picture of those two male, two pound balls of fun. Uh, they've been on exhibit actually since the day they were born. We're hoping that in the next few days they're going to actually start to emerge from that nest box. So if you get the opportunity uh, after this uh, groundbreaking ceremony, you can go up to the Primate Cat and Aquatics. You might get lucky and see a red panda cub. I can't promise that. But if you don't, certainly come back later in the season to be able to see them. 
and then come back and see their parents enjoying this great new space that we're providing here at Asian Highlands. So finally, I want, just want to say, you're seeing an evolution of zoos. You're seeing an evolution in how we talk about conservation and our commitment to conservation. You'll see that in this exhibit. You'll see that in how we talk about our animal programs and how we talk about conservation. When we open this exhibit, you'll see ways that we've incorporated so that the public can help us secure a future for Amur Leopard, Snow Leopard, Red Panda, and Takin. Secure a future for wildlife. So with that, I want to say thank you all again for coming out. Please join us next summer for the opening of Asian Highlands. It's going to be very exciting. Thank you.